Hi, I'm Jakob Lundholm. I'm CO2 Solution Manager in Danfoss Industrial Refederation. Welcome to this episode around the consideration when doing large industrial CO2 transcritical systems. Building industrial is not so much about certain system types or components, it's more related to uh, industrial customer expectations. For an industrial customer, the product is the primary and any system is secondary to that, including the refrigeration system. This drives certain customer expectations around uh, temperature accuracy on the product because that is related to the product quality. It's also related to safety, focus on safety, which drives uh, redundancy uh, in the design and, and uh, system monitoring. It's also related to lifetime expectations, which drives, you know, a higher focus on picking products with high reliability and serviceability. And finally, it also relates to total cost of ownership, which drives a higher, typically a higher focus on energy efficiency. Supporting industrial customers with the right level of uh, information is essential, especially because building CO2 transcritical and doing it large is, you could say, something which is new. There's a few systems in, in the world, but it's constantly developing uh, with the availability of both knowledge, but also the components. One of the differences between transcritical CO2 in smaller system and larger system is the presence of direct expansion. This is widely used and it's a simple way of doing things, but it also at the cost of CUP or energy efficiency. When you compare it with typical industrial uh, flooded system or flooded evaporators. Recently, uh, studies done by Danfoss have shown that uh, if you look at a system of a certain size, 1.2 megawatts, let's say having uh, 900 kilowatts on uh, the medium temperature level around minus two and 300 kilowatts on a low temperature around minus 25, can give you around six to eight percent difference in the energy consumption. And if you then calculate a bit on uh, what that means in terms of money, you end up around 40,000 euro in difference per year just in energy consumption. And that is calculated at a electricity cost around 20 euro cent per kilowatt hour. If you look at it in a lifetime perspective, you would end up around 1 million euro over a lifetime of 25 years. So it's considerable savings you can do when things are actually going larger. It has to be said that with an advanced superheat controller and also liquid management, you can obviously compensate some of the difference between the DX and the flooded system. And themes around energy efficiency when doing industrial, so it's critical CO2 systems and picking different kind of technologies will be covered also in future episodes. If you look a bit into pump systems, these can be done in a safe and proven way. It's basically something that has been done widely in industrial refrigeration for decades. With that, you gain the efficiency as we discussed before, but it also opens up some opportunities around how to manage, for instance, liquid coming from defrosting or so-called hot gas defrosting. You can do this by pushing the liquid back to the pump separator now that you have it, instead of pushing it back to the intermediate receiver and by that also affecting the receiver pressure during that. And when systems grow in size, you would constantly have evaporators calling for defrosting. So at some point, obviously, it makes sense to look into more advanced applications. Hot gas defrosting with CO2 requires obviously a higher pressure or you have to manage the higher pressure coming with the CO2. But again, it can be done in a safe and reliable way with the right level of controller and also with the right design. One of the typical questions around hot gas defrosting is where to take the gas from. Uh, obviously, you have the, the pressure, the high pressure available on your empty uh, discharge or high pressure side. But again, it requires definitely a pressure reduction in order to have a safe solution uh, because you have a bypass basically between the high pressure side and the low pressure side. It also represents a loss of energy having the pressure uh, reduction in, this, in the system. So at some point, it makes sense actually to look into what we call dedicated hot gas compressors, which only serves the purpose of providing the right amount of gas and the right amount of pressure to the hot gas defrosting. 
Finally, uh, with pump systems, the oil uh, needs to be managed in a way that you also recognize or, or have in HFC systems. This is done by oil rectification through a heat exchanger and uh, will give you the accumulation of oil uh, and then that can be returned back to the transcritical racks. In this way, you can stay in control with the oil concentration in the low temperature part of the system. You can study more about uh, low temperature applications in industrial CO2 systems in our application handbook. Uh, we also have made a industrial trans CO2 transcritical white paper that you could look into, or you can watch later episodes around uh, details on this. So thank you.